Okay, let's do the equation of a normal line. Normal is um, perpendicular. So watch this. I like this in hardcore parallel parking when normal parking simply isn't good enough. I'm like, no, 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 perpendicular parking because that's not parallel. <laughs> Look, it's perpendicular. If a line, or, sorry, a normal line is perpendicular to a tangent line. So for example, if we have a tangent line going like this, then a normal line is perpendicular to it. It's 90 degrees to it, okay? This is how we would we would draw it, something like this, something that's 90, 90 degrees. Let me show you what a normal line might look like. At this point right here, for example, I might want to draw the, um, yeah, let me actually just attempt to draw a tangent line. Tangent line might look like this. I'll just draw it as a dotted line. This right here could be the tangent line. I'll draw that one in purple like this. Well, the normal line of something is going to be 90 degrees to that. So something like, I mean, it won't be perfect, but I don't know, something like, like that. You see it's supposed to be 90 degrees to the tangent line, so this is the normal line. That would be the idea here, normal line. So it's very much like a tangent line, so we're gonna do a lot of the same things. So that's why I'm saying it's not so bad, we just need to add one step to what we've done for tangent line. So if you remember what we did for a tangent line, I like this, how to pretend to be normal, get it? Because we're doing normal lines. Uh, step one, find the derivative at any point. Still doing that. Step two, find the derivative at the specific point. Now the only difference is this is not going, uh, this is going to give you what I'm going to call m1. You're going to use an equation. This is the new thing that we're going to add. You're going to use this equation right here, m1, m2, 2 equals negative 1. This is something maybe worth memorizing. There's very little to memorize, but maybe this is something good to memorize here. This is the extra step. Okay, this one right here. This is the new step here, okay? So what are we going to do? We're going to use m1, m2 to get m2, which is the gradient of the normal. It's because what we just did, we just found the gradient of the tangent. That's what this is. This right here is the gradient. I'll write it down here. This is the gradient of the tangent. But we don't want the tangent line, we want the normal line. So we have to do something to the gradient of the tangent. And what do we do? Well, basically, if you think about this, if you get m2 by itself, to say you end up with m2 equals negative 1 over m1. So basically, you take the negative reciprocal. You take, you take your m1 value, you flip it, and you change the sign. Or you can just say you use this equation. It's the same thing. So that gets you m2, which is a gradient of the normal. That's what you actually need. Okay, you need to find m2. And that's because you're then going to use, again, you're going to use some points that you know. You already know x, you already know y. Hopefully you know those points. Right? So you'll know these values right here, you'll know them. Okay, so you'll know that, you'll know that. And you'll say, all right, well, y equals m2 times x plus c. And remember, you're going to know this, so you have that. You're going to know m2 because you just found it. You're going to know x, you just found it. You're going to solve for c. Then you'll have everything you need for that gradient or that um, normal line. Let's see how to do it with an example. So we'll do this one here. Let f of x be 2x cubed minus 4x minus 5. We're going to have this point p, which is 1 minus 7. It lies on this graph. We want the equation of the normal at p. Let's first of all look at this and say, well, what do we know from here? I know that the x value is 1 and the y value is minus 7. I know those two things from this. Right? That's what this right here, that's what this tells me. Okay, well, what do I do? Let's go ahead and do the different steps here. So step one, let's find the derivative at any point. So we'll find f prime of x. Well, let's see, the 3 comes in front here. That'll give me 6 times x to the power of, and 3 minus 1 is 2. All right, I have uh, my minus 5 will just disappear because it has no x's, so that goes away. And this becomes minus 4 here because this is a 1 here. 1 times minus 4 is minus 4. It becomes x to the 0, which is just 1, so there you go. So we have this. Now, what do I need? I need to find f primed at x equals 1. So what is that? Well, it's 6 times 1 squared minus 4. Let's work that out. 1 squared is just 1. 1 times 6 is just 6, so it's just 6 minus 4. That means f prime to 1 equals 2. I just found m1. So m1 equals 2. That is my first important thing that I found. I found the gradient of my tangent. So now I'm going to use that equation, m1 
m2 equals negative 1. That means I get m2 equals, let's see here, it's going to be, well m1 is 2, right? So it's going to say uh, minus 1 over 2 is going to be m2. Because I'm going to take this over here, it's like there's an over 1, I flip it, I change a sign. Or you could think of it as put a 2 here. 2 times m2 equals minus 1, to get m2 by itself you divide by 2. So either way, you get this. This is actually what I need. So then I'm going to go ahead and do the equation then in this correct form. So I'm going to use what I know. I know that x equals 1. I know that y equals minus 7. And I know that m2 equals minus 1. I'm going to set them all up to write this equation now. So y equals m2x plus c. I know all these values. y is minus 7. m2 is minus 1 half. x is 1. So plus c. Therefore, if I keep going here, let's see here, I got um, minus 7, um, and this is a minus 1 half, I'll add it to the other side, so minus 7 plus 1 half, that equals c. I need to get a common denominator, so I'll make it minus 14 over 2 plus 1 over 2, that's the same thing. That means I get minus 14 plus 1 is minus 13, so I'll say c equals minus 13 over 2. So finally, the equation then will be y equals, let's see, m2 which is minus one-half here, times x, plus c, which is minus 13 over 2. So this is my final answer. I'm done. Now there's a couple other ways you could write this. You could say, um, I mean you could do it in decimals I guess. You can say or, you could say that y equals, you know, mm, we can say this is minus 0 0.5 because that's what one half is times x, and uh, what's thirteen over two? What's that? That's going to be six point five. Yeah, six point five. So this would also be correct. So just so you know, this is also a correct answer. So they're both correct. Or we can do it in a different form. Do you remember the other form? So or in the form, uh, do you remember this one right here? It goes ax plus by plus d equals zero, just to show you could get it in that form if you wanted. Just trying to show the different combinations because you could be asked different versions of these things, okay? So let's just say I want it in that form. I could take this one right here, for example, multiply everything by two, that'll make it a lot easier. So uh, if I multiply everything by two, I'll have two y equals minus x minus 13 because the multiplying by 2 will get rid of the 2 here and get rid of the 2 here. So that'll that'll be a lot simpler. I move my minus x to the left side so I have x plus 2y. I move my minus 13 to the other side it becomes a plus 13. So this is also correct. So there's three different ways to represent this equation of a normal. Now maybe we want to just have a look and see what it'll look like, see if this looks reasonable. So let's try to just graph this one right here. So your calculator can't graph the normal, it can only graph the tangent, but that's alright. Watch, uh, whoops, I'm going to just try to graph the actual equation here that we started with, just to see what it looks like. Alright, it's that. Now at x equals 1, let's see what happens then. So give me the, I'll do analyze, give me the gradient at x equals, I'll type in just 1, say enter. Notice on the gradient was 2. Was it supposed to be 2? Yay, it was. So that's about as far as my calculator can go for me to tell me. Ah, actually, you know what? I can do one more thing. I can ask my calculator to graph the tangent. So I'll do points and lines. I'll say give me the tangent at that point here. So you notice this is the equation of a tangent. Now that's not my answer. That's not what I was looking for. I was looking for the normal. But what's kind of fun is what if I take that one and then I take my equation for the normal. You know this one right here? Let me try to graph that, and hopefully it's going to be looking like it's 90 degrees to this one and it passes through the same point. That's a, a way to tell if you've done it right. So 0.5x minus 6.5. Yay! You notice this line, which is the equation of my normal, does it look 90 degrees to that thing? Yeah. Does it pass through that same point? Yeah. So do you see how this is reasonable? So although your calculator can't cheat and tell you the equation of the normal, doing the equation of a tangent can still help you so you can check if your answer looks right. Do you see it looks right because it passes through that same point and it looks like it's 90 degrees to that one? So that's, that's at least the trick that I like to use. There you go.